In this video lesson, we will demonstrate the process of creating PHP class files. We will also show you how to connect to your class file and script to it using an object-oriented programming approach in PHP. Sounds exciting, huh? Recently, I've received a lot of requests from viewers here at YouTube asking me if I could demonstrate how I create and connect to my class files in my scripts. So we'll provide you with a code example and discuss the whole process right now. Okay, you can follow right along with me. First thing to do is get yourself a new example.php document ready, or you can name it whatever you want, but just make sure it's a PHP document and get your PHP opening and closing tag ready to go. Now let's write a small script that has a function. We'll write procedural code and then we'll simply objectify it into a specialized class file. And you'll also be learning to script a bad word filter function in PHP if you don't know how to do that yet. Okay, first we'll create a string variable and we'll name it str for short and put a set of double quotes and then semicolon and inside the double quotes is where we'll add our string. Now we're just going to hard code a string into the script but you would maybe take this string from a form where you, people are typing into your website. And here's my string. I am a jerky butt face. I also know a lot of other jerks. Now in your string you would put really strong profanities like the F word, the C word or the S word, but I didn't want to have anything too strong in this video tutorial that way a lot of young people can benefit from it too and I don't get yelled at by parents. So just pretend that these are really bad words. Now I'm going to make an array of the curse words that I want to search the string for and filter out and replace them with something better. So let's make this variable equal to an array open close parentheses semicolon and in between the parentheses is where you can put your array elements my first element in my array is going to be the word jerk I want to filter it out of all text and then the next word I put a comma another set of double quotes and in between there I'm gonna put butt face and a comma another set of double quotes and the last curse word is idiot now in your example you would just put the F word the S word and maybe the C word or the B word, whatever you want to put. Now we're going to copy that and go one line down and paste it. Now let's change this from saying curse words to replacers. Now you can just replace those any way that you like. Let's just put a star star there, butt face. Let's just change that word altogether to cute face. And let's say idiot, let's just put star star there. And you can have as many as you like in there. You can have a hundred different words and have your replacers array set up to match those. So what we're going to do now is use a function in PHP that will allow us to compute those two arrays and use the one to replace the other where those things are found if those things happen to be found within the string. So create a new variable, call it clean str, clean string, and let's make that equal to string i replace. PHP comes equipped with two functions for replacing like this, string replace and string i replace. String i replace lets you string replace without having to worry about upper or lower case. So it's in case sensitive string replace, non case sensitive. So it will replace a string whether it's lower case or upper case found or whatever. So string I replace and string replace get three parameters. The things you want to search the string for, which are curse words, comma, the next parameter is the replacers or the things that you want to replace those curse words with and then the subject which would be the string or the thing that you want to do the string that you want to do the replacing within now string replace and string i replace also work with single values so you don't have to put an array in there you can just put single values to replace one single value with another but it also gives you the option of feeding arrays to it so you can just replace large lists at one time and what's nice is it replaces it globally. That's why I put the word jerk in there twice to show you that it's a global replace. It doesn't just replace and filter out the first occurrence where the curse word is found. It replaces every occurrence where it's found. Okay, now this is still all procedural code. Now let's echo that out. Echo the clean string. Now run this file on a PHP enabled server. Okay, so you can see what my string looks like after it runs through that little filter. Now, what if you had four or five different forms on various different pages on your website and you wanted to 
do this kind of replacing in all of them. That's where modular programming comes in handy is because you wouldn't have to keep running all of these lines in all of those different files. And furthermore, if you ever wanted to change the setup of your arrays, you would only have to do it in one place in the module or in your class file. Okay, so that's the scenario is we have a lot of forms on our site and a lot of intake areas where people can type in comments, make posts, maybe there's forums, whatever you got going on, and you have to use this in 10 different documents on your website. Now that is when you want to create a class file. Now if these lines were only going to be in one document and run, that's fine. They can just be here procedurally just like they are. But if you're going to use it in multiple documents over and over again, you want to make it modular and dynamic and reusable. And that's where creating class files comes in really handy. Now we're going to make this code operate as a function that we can call. So let's type in function, call it clean, open close parentheses, opening curly brace, go down a couple of lines and put the closing curly brace. Now you can simply just take these lines right here, control X, pop them in the function, indent, and let's make this function take in a parameter which is str. So str already matches here so we don't have to change that. Now let's take this echo and control X and let's put it up in the function as well and just change the echo to return because you don't want it to echo right there. You want to return it to the line that calls this function clean. So we have string. Now let's run function clean. So make a new variable, call it clean underscore str is equal to this clean function. So you can just copy that and put it right there, put a semicolon. And just so nobody gets confused, let's change this variable name to string. Okay, so now you've set it up. This is still all procedural code, but now you've set it up to be a dynamic, reusable function. But it's not external to where this function could be used by multiple documents within your website. Only this document can use this function. So that's the art of objectifying code, is making it reusable throughout the whole system. Now you simply go down one line, echo this variable now, because that would be your clean string. And I'll change my string a little bit just to make sure I know it's working. Let's just put those curse words in there. Control S and now run this. So let me refresh my example. And you see everything works just fine. Okay, now the part we've all been waiting for, the object-oriented programming approach as it relates to creating PHP class files and having modular external reusable functions. Okay, so let's take this function, control X, and get it out of there. Bring this all to the top. Then you create a new PHP document and name it cursefilter.php. All right, inside of cursefilter.php, I'm going to open a PHP scripting block. Make sure I close it. I'm going to create the class now. Type in class and just name it the same thing that the file's name, cursefilter. And then you use opening curly brace and you go down a few lines and put in the closing curly brace. And you can put a space there if you want. Then you pop in your function that you had in your clipboard. Make sure you indent that a little bit and indent these into the function. There. Now you can get rid of the ex any extra lines that you have there that you don't want. So you see all I did was I took that function and I placed it into my class named curse filter that's in my class file named cursefilter.php. Okay, so you've just created your class file and you can do that with all kind of different code that runs within your applications or your software. Now it's important that I show you how to connect to that. That way we can still use that function clean because this file's not connected to the class file yet. So now I'll show you how to connect to the class file and then script to it just as if the function was in this file, okay? So the first thing we'll do is include cursefilter.php. So you include your class file using the include once function. Now let's go look in cursefilter. Get the name of your class. Control C, copy that. And then let's go right here under where we included. Type in dollar sign and paste. So the new variable is cursefilter. And that's going to be equal to new paste cursefilter object from the class file. So you're creating a new curse filter object right here and it's in a variable now called curse filter. Okay, so we'll just put a little comment line here just to separate visually that we are connected and the object is ready 
to be scripted against. Okay, now the last thing is inside of curves filter, you can see our clean function is inside of our class curves filter. So we have to actually tap into it in order to make it run. It won't run the way it is sitting here. So what you can do is put parentheses around everything. Just put a set parentheses around everything. Put some spaces here and in the front, you put in your curves filter object variable and you use dash and the greater than symbol. And then you can bring this back to where it's just space one space separating it. Now that's how you make that function run is you go into the curves filter object and you direct the clean function to run with whatever parameters that you want to pass through it, which in our case we're passing the string. So when the string goes through it, you can see it's picked up right here as the variable str, and then it is processed within all of our code and returned as clean string. So it's returned right here to this variable. And that is how object-oriented programming in PHP works in relation to class files that are external and modular reusable, all that good stuff. So now just change your string a little bit, press control S and now run this file. Okay, so you can see our sex okay so you can see that our test is successful and you will have effectively created a class called curse filter and you can call it in twenty five to a hundred thousand different documents that you want to call it into and use it. Now what's handy about it is if you ever want to change anything in this function or in these arrays or whatever you don't have to do it in 20 different files. You do it in the class and then all the files that are connected to that class like example.php is, it will reflect those changes and run the new code. So that's a really a good way to manage your software production logic. Now if you've made it all the way through the video lesson, what have you done? You started with a few lines of simple procedural code then you turn that into a dynamic function that was also procedural and then you took that function and you created a class file out of it that you can connect to using an object oriented programming approach in PHP and if you want you can call it poop like I do that's the acronym that I invented for it because it's PHP object oriented programming poop alright I hope you found this lesson useful and there's a little bit more to object-oriented programming as it relates to class files in PHP. And if you guys are hungry for more educational video material along those lines, I can surely supply you with it. So just let me know in the comment section below.